This is Adam King from Aliens Don't Ring Doorbells, and you're listening to Madness to Creation. Go ahead, say it. Welcome to the Madness to Creation podcast, where self-care and music merge. This is Maddie. How are you? Hopefully you guys are having a great summer so far, and it is so amazing seeing uh, shows come back to fruition and in the surface and all that stuff. And and we're going to consider this to be the second season of the Madness to Creation podcast. We're going to go every 50 episodes with our goal for the every 50th episode that we end it with a bang. And we wanted to start off things right with this episode featuring a uh, esteemed journalist, uh, Mark Dean, who is on Antihero Magazine and The Spill Magazine. He interviewed Don Brown, one of the United Kingdom's most celebrated sought-after guitarists, who has been the guitarist for a legendary band called Duran Duran ever since 2004. And Don Brown, this Friday, Don Brown is releasing his album entitled In My Bones. And the album is described as uplifting and reflective, yet eclectic. There are underlying themes of hope, belief, strength, and positivity running throughout. And he has worked with some of the amazing musicians. He's worked with Darren Mooney of Primal Scream, Andy Tracy of Faithless, Ian Thomas, uh, who has worked with Mark Knopfler and Eric Clapton, Anna Ross of Duran Duran, and Jesse Wagner, who has uh, who is the backup vocalist for uh, Lenny Kravitz and Kid Rock. And we had the pleasure of um, having a questionnaire session with uh, Jesse Wagner a while back. Check out that interview on menacecreation.com. And this Friday, Don Brown is releasing his album, In My Bones. And um, in 2004, Don Brown stood in for a lead guitarist, Andy Taylor. And in 2006, he was made the full-time lead guitarist for Duran Duran. And he's recorded three albums with Duran Duran and performed on four world tours with a legendary band. And he also co-wrote 20 songs on the last two, two albums from, with All You Need Is Now from 2011 and Paper Gods from 2015. And you can find Dom Brown anywhere on social media. You can also find Mark Dean, a uh, media journalist on Facebook, at Mark Dean Media Journalist. And also find him on Twitter and Instagram at Dino Jew. That is D-E-A-N-O-J-O-U. And please follow this podcast on Spotify, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Podchaser Podcast Addict, and wherever else you can find a digital streaming platform. On that note, here is Mark Dean's interview on the first episode of the second season of the Madness Creation Podcast. Take it away, Mark and Dom. Um, the Art of White Festival, and they, they all got sort of postponed from 2020 to 2021. And now the, the Hyde Park is now 2022, and the Art of White is in September this year. Um, so, I mean, yeah, in terms of touring and live work, it's been the worst period since I started playing guitar at the age, you know, the age of 13, 14. Mm. I, did, well, I did my first gig when I was 16, and... Um, this is the longest period of time without performing live. Um, the the plus side, though, is there's a silver lining, is that I've managed to um, yeah. record a, a whole um, solo album in my studio. That I, I'm just I'm just I'm releasing that in a few weeks' time on, G, on June the 11th. Um, obviously, that's something that I would not have been able to have done if I'd been on 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 the road for that year. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my yeah that's, that's kind of the silver lining for me there really. Had you done any work for that solo album? I think it said in the press release that the album's sort of taken a few years to come to fruition. Well, I mean, actually, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty accurate. I mean, basically, a couple of years ago, I like over over the last couple of years, I I had a few ideas that um, I'd kind of you know started on, started on a few of the tracks and then didn't finish them off, but, but thought, you know, I'm going to save these for a time when, when I get some time to, to, you know, to really get involved with them. So obviously the, um, the lockdown was perfect. I'd probably say about three, about three, maybe, maybe four, three or four ideas were kind of already kind of in the, in the beginning stages before the lockdown, but mm. pretty much everything else was, was written post, you know, during, you know, during the lockdown. Um, 
except for like two of the lyrics I had done before lockdown and all the other lyrics have been written through lockdown. What about the musicians then? You've got quite a collection of musicians on there. When you came to write yeah. and create the tracks, did you have a, a name, a, a person in mind for each song or was it more a case of who's available at the time? Well, actually, funnily, um, the three tracks that, that I, I just said that, you know, that I had sort of started before lockdown, they, they were all with um, other other drummers. Mm. Um, so I, I, I luckily already had those great drum tracks down um, and, the, and the basic structure of the songs already sort of, you know, written. Um, but they all needed to have fresh lyrics and production and, you know, new like new guitar parts and 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 and, and, and so you know and uh, I mean I'm I'm playing most of the instruments I'm playing myself on on the record um, mm. uh, your drums I'm playing all the bass some of the drums I've got three fantastic drummers doing uh, doing some of the songs um, it was kind of hard because um, I spent a lot of time fleshing them out myself and then and then towards the end of the year when things calmed down for it we, we had that little period didn't we. Um, I managed to get like a cellist in. He came in and and, and played the parts that I'd, I'd, I'd written on the computer. Um, and backing singers, uh, the same kind of thing again. You know that was kind of all saved until when things were a bit calmer on the on the old um, COVID front. You know, so I managed just whenever I could, I could just kind of squeeze people in in little windows. But um, I kind of spent most days in lockdown. You know, at least some time of every day pretty much within the studio you know um you obviously mentioned there the duran shows will be rescheduled for next year do you have any plans to maybe do some shows yourself to promote the album obviously I, I feel personally that songs only really come alive in a live setting yes i mean i i haven't got any concrete dates or i haven't yeah. decided who would be in the you know in the actual live band for that but um I'd, I'd like to, but there's nothing sort of concrete at the moment because if I do it, I, I want to do it properly. And, um, yeah. you know, that, that requires, re, you know, uh, rehearsing and getting people's commitments and stuff. So I just need to plan it and be, you know, be really on top of it, really, if I'm honest. Would you therefore um, say that Duran, um, Duran is, is your full-time job and anything you, you can do outside of that is you That's then? kind of how it has been, yeah, 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 for the last, well, pretty much the last... Uh, 15, 16 years it's been it's been like that really yeah yeah, yeah. they they've been the main the, the main gig and then I'd kind of squeeze things in around it definitely yeah um you mentioned the albums were recorded in your own studios where I assume you are now do you feel it's essential for professional musicians these days to diversify um to ensure maybe a consistent and regular income to have things like your own recording studio well I mean I think it I, I think it it can, you know, it can only help. I mean, it wasn't, it was a very expensive thing to sort of undertake though, you know, because it's a fully floating mm. soundproof room. So not everybody can do that. Um, you know, I just had that opportunity and I just made, made that commitment to doing it. I mean, for me, yeah, it's, it's obviously commercially this year, again, uh, you yeah, know, this last eight, well, 18 months now, isn't it? Six, 16 months. I've not been able to really get other people in here to record their projects. Yeah. Um, but again, that's afforded me time to do my own thing, but I would, you know, I'd like to continue, you know, producing and engineering other, other projects that, that, you know, that, 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 you know, things that are funded by, you know, labels or whatever, you know, to, as you say, you know, to kind of, you know, you, it, it's very difficult to rely just on, on live work, you know, so yeah. I think if you can do other things, you know, studio work or, you know, sessions with other bands and, even teaching, you know, I mean, lots of my very talented music friends that, you know, teach music when they're not on the road, you know. Yeah. There are lots of different ways of, of making money. And, and now, you know, nowadays there's lots of online um, remote recording, isn't there, you know. Yeah. You know, where people, um, you know, they send you the track and you, and you lay down the parts and you, you send it all digitally back over, over, over the internet, you know. Yeah. Um, you mentioned there about the live shows. In the absence of... of been able to play live a lot of bands have actually gone and done these online streaming sort of shows what's your view on that is that something maybe that you would like to try yeah, but or not really interesting you, you mentioned that because I have, i've been doing that for the last few weeks um 
with a with a brand new project. It, it, but it's it's a covers band. It's called the Standins, mm. and um, we've been doing songs by you know Prince, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, ah. Pink Floyd, Stones, Beatles. You know, basically classic rock. And yeah, it's a fantastic band of, of great musicians. And we've we've had somebody who's, who's been funding that because we're going to try and take that you know make it a bit you know take that further and. As soon as lockdown is is over, we, we hope to get out there and do some proper shows. And you know, I mean, that's very much a side thing. You know, that's, yeah. that, that's a covers thing. So obviously, that's less creative. But it, it's been amazing. I mean, I get to play my ass off. You know, I'm, I'm playing all these. I'm playing. You know, I'm the only guitarist in the band, and they're all songs that that mean something to me through my, since my childhood. You know, there's uh, David Bowie. I didn't mention him, but he's in there as well. Yeah. And they're just songs that, in some over over my life, they've they've touched me in some way, you know. And I finally got this amazing group of musicians together, and we've done three shows so far every 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 two weeks. And we've got our last one is coming up on the third um, of June. It's on YouTube. It's free. It's a free thing to download. You know, you can just yeah. watch it live for free. It's on YouTube. Um, the standings, you know. If if you go to my website, DonBrown.com. Yeah, there's a link from there to it if anybody's interested to watch that. Um, yeah. It's a fantastic band, and so no, I I I'm not. It, if, if I'm honest, I was very sort of sceptical about the whole thing for so mm. long. Hence, only doing it in the last sort of six weeks. Um, I didn't like the idea of performing and having no reaction from an audience, sure. and not being able to see them and, and you know get, you know feed off their energy, you know. So, um, yeah, it took, took me a long time to come around to it, but I, I've surprised myself and I've actually really, really enjoyed it. It, it. It's the next best thing to actually perform in live to an audience, is it? Yeah. You know, because you're, you're focused, you have to be in the moment playing the songs as though you're playing to, you know, a thousand people, you know, a few thousand people. You know, there's only a couple of hundred people watching it, probably, but um, do you know what I mean? It's... Yeah. It, it, it's it's, it's been great. It's been, it's been really, really great because it's focused me and, and it's, it's got my, my, my playing back up to scratch again, you know. So, yeah, for me, it's been very positive. The mention there of the cover band quite surprises me because you, you've gone from basically a sort of a, a classic rock background to performing classic pop in Duran. In Duran. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. What, what do you mean? You, you mean it's... I said it, it's, mean, it's quite a departure for going from a classic rock musical background you mentioned the songs that influenced you growing up. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, I'm with you, yeah. To performing classic Yeah, well, I mean, um, I mean my, my tastes are so eclectic and diverse. I mean, I, I, I love everything from classic rock to, to jazz to blues, you know, proper deep, you know, hardcore blues and, you know, heavy rock. Um, you know, any, poor classical Bob Marley, you know, you know anything that's that's got, something soul and something special you know I, I I'm not I'm not snobbish about, about what I like and and Duran Duran I mean they were a band that um I was aware of growing up because my sisters were were, were sort of very into them and <laughs> so the songs are sort of around the house and yeah. you know and they're a household name you know there's songs that you, you hear in shops and just gen, you know just generally on the radio don't you um especially, you know, 25 years, 30 years ago, you know. So when I got the opportunity to do that, I mean, I was at that stage, I was just starting out in session work. So I was playing with lots of other people anyway, um, yep. doing different sort of styles and different, you know, more, more pop stuff, a lot of it. Um, I mean, I was thrilled to be asked to do it because, you know, they are great songs and, and there is guitar in there. Obviously, it's not as guitar orientated as, as, as the classic rock stuff that we talked about. But, yeah. Um, no, no, it's it's been a great a great gig to do, and you know we've done four world tours with them, and it's a really very very fun band. Your sisters must have been pretty pleased when you got that gig on a permanent yeah. basis. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, literally one of them particularly, she used to have like posters on the wall. So no, she was really really happy and excited, and you know she's been backstage and yeah. met the guys, but she's always quite. A bit shy and nervous around them, if I'm honest. But, yeah. <laughs> your albums, yeah. um, your latest solo album, uh, um, it's hard to define in terms of musical style. It, it goes into a variety of styles and musical genres. I just wondered if you'd any desire with maybe a future solo release to actually step out and maybe 
challenge yourself and, and take on a new musical style that maybe you haven't previously tried? Yeah, I mean, well, well, well some of the styles on, on this latest album, there are, thing, there are a few there are a few songs that are things that I've never really done before, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, a song called uh, Baby I Love You. No, sorry, Baby Don't Worry. Uh, Baby I Love You is another, another song. Um, you know, that's got a kind of, people think it's got, it's got like a, it's got like a, um, dulcimers in there and things, and people say it's a bit it's kind of, Greek, it's a bit sort of Spanish in there, it's a bit, a bit Santana. Um, I mean, I'd have to do like an out and out jazz record or an out and out um, heavy metal record for, to be something that I haven't I haven't sort of touched on, yeah, or gone too, you know, too deeply into before really on, on my records or or, or or classical or or reggae, you know. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I mean, I have covered most of the genres in, on my record, you know, on my on my previous three records and this current one you know yeah um so i think yeah that that would be a a tricky one to find something there for me to do on that front has it been difficult to stamp your own identity your own personal sound on the duran duran because you've you've recorded what two or three albums with them now um or do you have to stick to a, a specific template of what the defined band sound actually is how much of it is you or how much of you is it is you actually having to compromise a little bit sure that no there's there's definitely compromise there um i mean the thing is is that right from the off they they very much sort of embraced my style because obviously i don't play like like the other two guitar players they've had you know in the in the band before um but it, your sort of job when you sort of fill in well, yeah, when, it's not when you fill in, but when you take over yeah. a position like the guitar in, in Duran Duran, you have to stay quite true to the original songs and, and be, you know, be, yeah. be 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 pretty honest to like to the original sound, you know. But yeah. I've interpreted the songs my own way, and, and over the years I've kind of taken them slightly, you know, I've, I've integrated my style and my sound, and I think you have to because otherwise you yeah you wouldn't really perform properly, would you? You'd be you'd always be sort of like like acting so going through the motions kind, kind of, of thing yeah yeah you know you put your own flair and your own feel and your own yeah touch and start to it really so and i've been i've been allowed to do that and and there are some songs where there's actually you know 16 bars or so where you do guitar solo and i can pretty much do what i want in those in those spots it's not a lot of them there's probably the current live set probably five times a night that happens yeah um, but that's a lot more than a lot of pop bands, you know. Yeah. So you can throw your heavy metal guitar solos in if you want. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, you can, yeah, you can sort of throw in your own thing. And I mean, a song called um, "Ordinary World," for instance. Um, this is one of the yeah. big songs from the '90s in their, in their sort of second wave, really. Sort of, I think it was '92. I think that came out. I mean, that's got some really lovely guitars from the original. That I, obviously I stick to those parts, but. In the middle, there's a there's a spot where I do a solo, and it's nothing. You know, that I wrote that I wrote the solo myself is nothing like anything that was on the record. Yeah, and that's always a moment for me. And um, you know that that's yeah. So I'm fine doing that. You know, there, there's enough room there for me to interpret and for me to sort of feel like I'm I'm putting my own stamp on it. You know, to keep me to keep me sort of um, you know inspired really. You've been in the band quite, quite, as you say, quite a number of years. You've played on several studio albums. Do you get recognised now as the guitarist of Duran Duran? Obviously, the other guys are instantly recognisable. Do you now get that? Um, well, I mean, I get recognised sort of physically, if, like by, by by the fans, you know, um, in the cities where we're playing because, you know, obviously yeah. the fans are staying there and stuff, you know, they, they've all seen in hotels. So yeah, oh no, I get recognized instantly by, by the, all the fans, you know, yeah. um, not, not, I, but I wouldn't have said, you know, as a kind of household, you know, to people that, that aren't following the band now, yeah. you know, hardcore fans, no, no, they, they probably wouldn't know who I am, but, um, because I've, I've never been actually made an official member of the band, you know, like, like obviously Andy Taylor was the original and then, then there's Warren, um, yeah. who was an official member of the band. So, so my role has always been a little bit more sort of undercover, a little bit more, 
anonymous. And I, I don't mind that because I, I can lead a bit more of a normal life, you know. Yeah. Um, and that kind of suits me, really. So you can, you, you can play in one of the biggest pop bands ever and still help retain that own level of anonymity. That allows you to do your own thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I do sometimes. I mean, it's not often at all, but there, there have been times when I've, I've been somewhere nowhere near anything Duran Duran related. I, you know, been out, you know, down in Brighton or something, <laughs> like for a day out, and someone's come out and said, Dom, Dom Brown, um, you know, that kind of thing. But very, very, you know, yeah. it's, not, it's not very yeah. often. Just a couple then to finish. Do you have any hobby, sure, yeah. hobbies or interests outside music? Uh, yeah, yeah, God, yeah. Um, I mean, music is is the is my life. It's my yeah. main thing. But yeah, you know, I, I love I love um, film, uh, reading. I love I love going out for walks. Yeah. Um, you know, going to art galleries and stuff. But obviously, I haven't been yeah. doing much of that in the last eighteen months. Um, yeah, pretty much those kind of you know those kind of like things that. Artistic things, really, and yeah. things within the arts, mainly. Yeah. Just the final one, then. Um, yeah. If the roles were reversed, who would you like to personally sit down and interview? Maybe somebody who's inspired you, a personal hero. Maybe not even a musician. Right. Oh, blimey, that's a that's a that's a tough question. I have. <laughs> um, blimey. Uh, well, actually, if it was a musician, I. I I'd probably go for somebody like, um, because it would have to be somebody living, like probably Stevie Wonder, actually, somebody like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just talk about his process of those, of some of those amazing albums he did you know, back in the 70s. Um, and if it wasn't, if it wasn't music related, um, blimey. God. No, you got me there. I, 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 I would have to think really hard on that one. Okay, no problem. That's great. Um, um, apologies for the delay at the start. I'm glad we got there in the end. Yeah, no worries, Mark. Um, is it possible? Can I uh, can I send you anything? I mean, do you put this on your on your website and stuff? Is that yeah, what uh, yeah. What were you going to ask? And can I send you any links or anything like that to? Um... Yeah, sure. If you do it through, um, I think this was organised through Ben Ben Pester. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. If you send them th and, and, uh, through him. What kind of things are, uh, are useful? Obviously, social media yeah, that's, links, but that sort of thing. And what? And like a link to a song, maybe something like that. Or I think he's already sent me um a kind of like obviously the link to the album ahead of this. Um, he sent me so I think a link to the single. I think he's pretty much handled all that. You know, if you maybe okay, want... yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll just make sure he's got all the you know. Yeah. Like my Instagram and Twitter, because I, I don't think he's got that stuff, actually. No problem. Um, yeah, obviously I can include that then with the final piece, certainly. I'm quite, and, and when, do, when does that come out? Um, as soon as I can get it done, <laughs> I've got three or four um, interviews in, in the next couple of days. It'll be within probably a week, a couple of weeks, probably tied in with the album date. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, that's the 11th of June. Okay, thanks, mate. Brilliant. Thank you thanks, very Mark. much. Cheers. Take care, mate. Bye. Bye.